Hello there, Stampin' Peace friends. I am Mary Nave, coming to you from um, Columbus, Ohio. And it's a beautiful day here in Central Ohio. I'm so glad my mood's been a little blue this week. Um, it's been more than a week since I've been on Facebook Live with you. Uh, last Thursday, I drove to Cincinnati and I had um, an afternoon meeting at the hotel where I've been hosting my Creative Escape weekends. And then my fall weekend was Friday through Monday. So I was gone from Thursday afternoon until Monday evening. I'm trying to get back in the swing of things, but I wanted to tell you that um, the weekend was fabulous. I had nearly 60 people there and lots of fun, great make and takes, lots of laughter stories, um, reuniting with friends, making new friends. We had several new people there, which is always fun and exciting. But the highlight of my Creative Escape weekends for me is always on Saturday evening. On Saturdays, um, for each event, we host a charity raffle. The guest of the event bring items to donate, and then those same people purchase tickets for the raffle prizes. And each time we choose a different uh, cause or charity. This time we chose to support NAMI. If you are not familiar with NAMI, it stands for National Alliance on Mental Illness. And um, last, uh, just a few days ago, um, we celebrated, I shouldn't say celebrate, but we um, had Mental Health Day, World Mental Health Day. And um, if you've been with me for a while, you may have heard me talk on sub this subject before. This is a um, cause that is near and dear to my heart. And I will tell you that together, 60 of us raised $2,235 for NAMI. So um, it truly is a testament of how you gather some people together and crafters are always quite generous, but you gather a group of people together. They each do what they can and together we make a big difference. We impact the lives of other people. And um, it's a little bit ironic that um, many of you know I deal with depression and anxiety. And this is a really hard week for me. Um, I don't tell you this because I want your pity, nothing like that. I'm sharing this with you, even as hard as it is to share, um, because I want to use this um, thing, this challenge of mine, um, to make people aware of this cause and others, um, and to maybe help somebody else by talking about it. So, um, if you could just, um, when you come across somebody or meet somebody that is dealing with mental health issues, I ask you to show them compassion and love and support. And if you are ever somebody that needs to talk to somebody, please reach out to me. I understand a bit of what you're going through and I would like to be a support to you. So, and again, I thank my friends who attended the Creative Escape Weekend and coming together for this cause and raising $2,235 for NAMI. I love you and appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to my next Creative Escape Weekend in January. And at that time, we'll be um, supporting a different cause. So um, I just wanted to share that with all of you. 
Today I have a fun, oh, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't expecting that to happen, but um, deep breath, right? Okay, today I have a fun project to share with you. I call it the four-in-one stamping technique, and I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily make four cards with this technique. Um, today I've chosen to use the classic Christmas stamp set with this technique, but once you see the stamping technique, you'll realize that you probably have several stamp sets that would lend themselves very well to this stamp set. And you know I'm a believer of if you can make one card, make two or make multiples. And so that is what I'm going to be showing you today, how to make four cards in one. All right, let me flip my camera around now and we'll get started right away on today's project. While I'm doing that, please share this live video and invite others to join us for today's demonstration. Okay, things are not clicking the way they're supposed to. Hold on one second. Things don't want to flip. I don't know what's going on. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. Alrighty, I think we're all set now. I'm getting a little bit of a shadow here. Not sure what that is about. Let me adjust, adjust my lighting and see if that makes a difference. A mm, little bit. All right, thanks for your patience while I was struggling with technical difficulties here. I'm also gonna grab myself a tissue. Okay, as I said, this is my featured stamp set today, Christmas Classics. To do this technique, you're going to start with a um, sheet of, why are we getting that crazy shadow? I don't know what's going on here. That seemed to help. Okay, maybe that, that's better. Okay, you're gonna start with a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And I want the, we're gonna make four cards with this. I want the white portions of my card. So the stamping portions of my card to measure five by three and three quarters inches. So I'm, I'm listen to my math and you'll get this. Oh my goodness, what is going on today? Okay, things weren't quite tightened on my stand. Oh, I feel like I'm falling apart here. Okay, regroup, eight and a half by 11. I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to cut off one inch on one short side and one inch on the long side. And the reason I'm doing that is I want each of my white pieces in the end for each of my cards to be five inches wide by three and three quarter inches high. So that's why I cut off um, one inch on the length because five plus five is 10 inches, so I cut off that 11th inch. And I'm going to lightly score this. You don't have to press hard, just lightly score it. And then I want the width of those pieces to be three and three quarters inches. Three and three quarters by two is seven and a half. So I cut off that one inch from the eight and a half inch width. So that's how I came up with my measurements. 
All right. Some people will keep their um, piece of cardstock, eight and a half by 11, and then they'll do their cutting and trimming at the end. I prefer to do it this way. So here's the same piece that I've cut down and I've just scored in the middle each direction. I do need to use my um, Stampin' Pierce mat because Christmas Classics is a photopolymer set. That means it's that made of that material that we can see through. I'm starting with Garden Green. And on each of these four quadrants or four rectangles, I'm going to stamp the holly leaves three times. And I'm stamping on each of these quadrants, I'm stamping near the center where those score lines intersect, all right? I'm kind of using those four corners as my guide for starting the stamping. Notice too that I'm moving this cardstock around and I'm just generally stamping the same way in each quadrant, but I'm not doing any kind of measuring um, or expecting that they'll be exactly the same, all right? So that was my garden green color. I'm going to close this up and set that aside. Whoops. And then I'm going to use shaded spruce. And I'm using shaded spruce for this pine sprig. And what I'm going to do is stamp kind of away from the center, but then stamp again closer to the center of those holly leaves. And again, whatever um, stamp set you choose will kind of dictate your arrangement. So yours might be a little different than mine if you're choosing a different stamp set. And it's okay that I'm overlapping the pine sprigs with the holly. Personally, I think that makes it a little more interesting and a little more realistic, right? And I'd say that looks good. So I'm going to stop there. Notice that I stamped and stamped off each time because then it fills in some of that white space, but it gives a lighter shade of this um, shaded spruce color, just adding more interest, alrighty? And then I'm going to use my Cherry Cobbler ink and I'm going to stamp some holly berries. And you can see that in each quadrant, I'm pretty much doing the same thing, but no two are exactly alike. And that is all right. And look at how fast it all comes together. Now I am going to fill in, I want my um, holly leaves to be colored. So I'm using the light shade of my shaded spruce Stampin' Blends, and I'm just gonna quickly color these in. Whichever stamp set you choose may or may not need you to do some coloring. This would be 
um, just kind of thinking the time of year we're in and the kind of projects we're all working on now. This stamping technique would be fun to do with fall leaves, perhaps snowflakes. Great technique for using with flowers and um, foliage. This is a very quick coloring of my holly leaves. But it is so worth the time to color these because it really makes them look even more beautiful than they already are. I love the name of the stamp set too. Christmas classics, because really isn't the this the kind of, oh, what do I want to say, quintessential traditional Christmas image or holiday image with the holly and berries and the pine. Notice I'm just minutes into this demonstration. And look how much stamping and coloring I have already done. So you can see that the four in one stamping technique is great for making multiples of cards whether you need several cards at once or if you want to um, build up your stash of cards. This is a fun way to do that. And we could make the same cards four times, stamping separately each of the four times, right? On four separate pieces of cardstock. But this is a fun way to do it all on one piece. Do our stamping and coloring first. And then cut out, or cut the uh, large piece of cardstock into the four pieces for our four different cards. Oops, I must have went fin was thinking I was finished, closed up my marker there. Now I chose to fill in these holly berry leaves with shaded spruce, even though I stamped them in garden green. Um, we do not have garden green stampin' blends, but I wanted to use a green that would complement the shaded spruce, but yet stand out from the different, um, as a different color from what I was using for the pine. But as you can see, the garden green and the shaded spruce complement each other very well. Jennifer, um, I think your question is flipping over the holly leaf to fill in the holly leaves. Um, it would not in this case, because even if you would do that, 
um, all you're going to get is the flat surface of the whole stamp. Okay, um, the stamp in particular is not made to do that. We do have some stamp sets that do that, and those are known as reversible stamps. Then I'm just gonna take my dark shade of Shaded Spruce Stampin' Blend, and I'm just gonna go over the veins of the holly leaves very quickly. And it, again, it just adds another layer of dimension when we add that dark shade, when we go over those veins with this darker shade. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I'm doing this very, very quickly. Sometimes I think we can focus on being perfect and there is no such thing as perfect stamping, right? Perfect crafting. And if it's perfect, it's machine made. It's not handmade. So don't feel that you, don't put that pressure on yourself of having to be perfect. I think when we try to be perfect, it also takes away the fun and satisfaction we get in crafting. Oops, I just noticed I must coloring in a holly leaf right there. Kind of got hidden in the pine sprigs, so I'll go back and fill that in. I think I did the same thing right there and here. Did anybody else catch that? Okay, let me go back and fill those in. It'll be fast, fast, fast. And now, even proves my point that um, it's good to overlap these images because it does make it m look more realistic, right? All of the holly is not going to be in front or behind the pine and vice versa. So there we have that. I'm gonna move these ink pads out of the way. I still will need my cherry cobbler but I'm going to wait until after I stamp the sentiment. So now I'm going to cut this one sheet of cardstock in half in both directions. So this is 10 inches long. I'm gonna cut it in half at five inches. And then each of these pieces, and I can put them together. Each of these pieces is seven and a half inches wide and half of that is three and three quarters. So I did my math before, right? So now this is what I have left. I'm, and I'm going to, they all started like this, right? We worked from the corners, but now I'm going to turn these in directions that I think will look best with my sentiment. So I'm going to have two horizontal and two vertical cards, and I'm going to use the Peace on Earth stamp set. Um, I Peace on Earth is just one of my favorite holiday sentiments. It always has been, probably always will be. And when I pulled this out today, I thought how very fitting based on what is happening in Israel. Um, so I stuck with it. So if you are into prayer or keeping positive thoughts, um, please pray for the people of Israel and everybody in, involved in that horrific situation. 
So there's two. And notice that I'm letting my um, sentiments overlap with the pine sprigs and things that are there. And again, I can play with this. Move things around. See where you think the sentiment you chose works best. And the sentiment you choose may um, really dictate where you're putting it. For example, if you would choose season's greetings, you're probably going to lay out your cards a little differently than you would with this particular one. So know that there's no right or wrong. It's based on what you feel works, what is aesthetically pleasing to you. All right. So now I have my four stamped card layers. So I'm going to, oh, one more thing I want to do before I had put my cards together is I'm going to add a little bit of splatter to um, these pieces. And I'm using, um, what is this, Pebbled Path. I'm using Pebbled Path Light. You can use light, dark. You could use crumb cake. Um, you could use perhaps a yellow, maybe crushed curry. Whatever you feel works for you. And I opened one of the wide tip ends. And then just with my other um, blend, I'm going to tap, moving this around and adding some random splatter to these stamped pieces. You can do as much or as little as you like. And I'm gonna stop right there. So can you see that splatter? I show it close up. All right. I have previously cut four pieces of cherry cobbler cardstock. I wanted this to have just a small, be a small border around my white pieces. So I've cut these five and an eighth inch by three and seven eighths to get that narrow border. I'm just noticing my nail polish, which my nails are grown out. I need to get them done, but I'm thinking, oh, that is pretty darn close to cherry cobbler color. I guess that's why I like it so much. Cherry Cobbler has always been my favorite Stampin' Up! Red. And it still is. And then I've cut four card bases from Shaded Spruce cardstock. Five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and I scored it four to quarter down the middle. Kathy, you're coming to Ohio, and I don't remember which part of Ohio it is that you visit. How exciting! Ohio is a great state. So now you can see how my four in one cards are really coming together. Melanie, are things temperatures in? Arizona, getting a little more mild. I know you've had super, super hot summer. I 
Leanne, I agree. It's um, the cards are simple and elegant. One of my favorite styles ever. Simple and elegant. I think it's kind of neat that stamping and card making is a craft where people really, um, where you really see people's different styles. Whether it's simple and elegant, um, or maybe fancy and wow where they have a lot of layers, a lot of extras, a lot of bling. Some people like a lot of texture. Maybe texture created from embossing folders or punched and die cut layers. Whoops, make sure that goes the right direction. So my card opens the right way. Okay, so now you see I've got my four cards. Should we add a little bit of bling here? I pulled out these, what are these called? The Blooming Pearls. Um, this gold is really pretty in here. Some of these, this green might work too. I like that as well. Of course, we have a whole bunch of, Lori says, yes, bling, please. Um, I'm going to try some of these. Green pearls. Not exactly sure which green this is, but I think they work nicely. Put it here around the pieces are piece on earth. And then on the other two cards, I think I will try. Oh, I want, should we go a couple more? Let's go a couple more. Let's do five pearls instead of three for these cards. Oh yeah, I like that better. All right, and then I think on my two vertical cards, I'm gonna go with the gold. I'll hide this one in here. I don't know where I want that one. Maybe I'll hide that in there. And five gold pearls on my last card as well. All right, what do you think? Melanie, I grew up in Cleveland on the west side. Fairview Park, North Olmsted, Westlake, Rocky River area. So you enjoy your trip and enjoy Cleveland. It's a great city. So there are my cards. And that is my four-in-one stamping technique. What do you think? Who's up? Raise your hand, um, wave, give a shout out if you are going to give the stamping technique a try. Seems pretty easy, right? And I'm looking at my time. It is 2.35. Um, I probably talked for just a few minutes when I got onto this Facebook Live. So we probably started at, say, 2.05. So in 30 minutes, I created four beautiful cards. And I, you know what? You can do it too. I know you can. So I hope you'll give it a try. If you don't have the Christmas Classics stamp set, um, you can certainly order it. But no worries if you don't have it. You can do the same technique 
with many of the other stamp sets that you have at home. Um, so please do give it a try. And when you try it, please share your creations right here on Stamp and Peace with Mary Nabe. I love to see what you do. It makes me happy to see that you, um, that I inspire you to try new things and to also to share what you make because by sharing what you make, you also are inspiring other people. So um, please give it a try. Now, who would like to receive one of these cards? Lucky you all, I'm giving away four. You'll each, I'll choose four winners and um, you'll each get one of these. And I, the more I look at these green pearls, look at that. I'm loving them. Another opportunity or um, examples of bling you could use for these cards would be the festive pearls. You could even use some of our pastel sequins, maybe in white or the gold. Um, you could even make the pinks work in there. Um, iridescent rhinestones, iridescent pearls, lots and lots of choices. All right, if you would like to have your name entered into the drawing to receive one of these cards, please type in the comments now for in one stamping technique. So number four, in one, number one stamping technique, four in one stamping technique. Boy, Tony, you're a fast typer. <laughs> All right, are there any questions that I can answer today? I'm going to, while people are typing four in one stamping technique, I want to scroll back here and see if I missed any questions. Oh, Melanie, you're cleaning your windows and porches because the temperature is mild. Good for you. We are expecting a lot of rain here in Ohio on Saturday, but... Um, I was thinking this morning as the sun was coming through the back windows and the patio door of my house that I really need to go out and clean those windows. So I know the rain's coming, but I think I'll still feel good if I get those windows cleaned <clears throat> and free of all that summer dirt and dust and pollen that blows around. All right, everybody, I thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you again on Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be working with the Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks next week. All right. So next week, that is the featured um, product, Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks. I'll be going live on Monday and Thursday, and I have some great cards planned for you. And we'll use each of those masks once. So you'll get to see me use all of them. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Happy stamping, and be kind to yourself and be kind to one another. Bye-bye.